On October 7th, I was at home watching the news. I saw what was going on in the south of the country. At first, the news was reporting a terrorist infiltration, and there was no information about the horrors that took place there. I started scrolling through social networks. I felt horrified by everything that was taking place. I used to fight in Ukraine for the Ukrainians, but even in the war there, I did not see anything like this. In my whole life, I have not seen anything like it. I could never imagine that anyone would be capable of such atrocities, decapitating people, burning people. Dennis Desyatnik and his friend Ariel Shapiro met each other over 25 years ago while serving in the Israeli border police. They also had the chance to train abroad and use to instruct on battle tactics, teaching shooting and Krav Maga. But after the blood-filled Saturday, October 7th, they felt it was the time to share their experience with other Israelis. First of all, we were scared for our families. We don't want anything like this to happen again, and unfortunately, it might, since the war is not over yet. And the security forces and the army do not have enough human resources. So Ariel and I decided to gather people who are against terrorism to unite them. Dennis and Ariel formed INF, the Israeli National Force, and aimed at everyone interested in learning about sport and martial arts, first aid, and also training dogs. But what they do not teach is to use arms, as their goal is quite different. We don't teach people to fight. We teach people how to protect themselves. Dennis and Ariel tell people what they should have in their cars and in their shelters and also give guidelines on the steps to be taken in case of a terrorist infiltration along the lines of what happened on October 7th. People should be prepared to make a WhatsApp group with their neighbors, as nowadays we usually don't know who our neighbors are. Then, if they hear shooting or find out about a terrorist infiltration, they need to know how to act, instead of locking themselves inside their safe rooms. And in this case, you don't need to know how to use arms. In two minutes, people should be able to put on comfortable clothes in which they can run. If there's no option to take a car, people need to escape the area together with their neighbors. In the worst case, they should be ready to protect themselves with anything available. Knives, sticks, pepper spray. Dennis and Ariel do not only give practical lessons, they also teach people to be disciplined and give them a sense of confidence. The idea of that is that people won't stay alone in the first place. They will know how to unite. There are a lot of people texting on the social networks that they're panicking because nobody knows what to expect next, whether the war against Hamas will end soon or whether it will lead to a bigger war on different fronts. Speaking about different fronts means different terrorist groups, such as Hamas in the Gaza Strip and Hezbollah in Lebanon. But it's important for Dennis and Ariel, and especially for Dennis, who is Muslim, to stress that the fight is never against any particular ethnic or religious group. I want to underline, we are not against the Arab population. Even in our movement, we have Arabs. You should know that there are Arabs enlisted in the Israeli army. There are Arab doctors who save our soldiers. They are Arabs, Druze, Bedouin, who support the state of Israel. For today, around 1,200 people joined the Israeli National Force. And though the main goal is to teach Israelis how to protect their homes, Dennis and Ariel say that if needed, they can join the Israeli security forces and can help in the way it would be required. If the situation escalates, we will pass all the information about our volunteers to security forces, and they will decide where and how to use the help of our people. It's important to be prepared to any development, but Dennis and Ariel still hope the skills they teach would not be needed in practice.